Okay, well, we're going to start out with some announcements this morning. Next Tuesday is our last day in module 154. 40 out of 40 days. It's our largest module that we will go through in the whole course. So those of you who have been here all 40 days, pat yourselves on the back. Congratulate yourselves because it is a very long module. Does it seem like it's been 40 days? <coughs> Excuse me. Doesn't feel like it's been 40 days for me either and I haven't been doing all the work. <laughs> um, have y'all enjoyed the module so far? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, what's going to be coming up in module 155 is radiology and medicine and pathology. Now, radiology, I enjoy radiology. Pathology and medicine are not my favorites, <laughs> but it's going to be fine. Just because I don't love them don't mean that you won't. Um, but we'll be look, talking a lot about vaccinations and different things like that. So, um, and what a better time to be talking about vaccinations than right now, right? right. <laughs> but um, anyway, um, so that and uh, also, I don't think any of you are emailing me assignments, but uh, did, who saw my remind yesterday? I'm actually not signed up for the um, remind. Can you sign me up? Well, yeah, I'll send you an inv another invitation, boo. Um, okay. Okay, so I only have a few students actually emailing me assignments. Whenever you need to email me assignments, if that happens in the future, this is what I need. I need them clearly labeled because if you just shoot me a picture, for example, of chapter 19 workbook, doesn't have your name on it. I have to go back in lesson plans to find out where that actually goes. Then I have to get into the grade book in Genzabar and then I have to find it. I need it clearly labeled with you. Just like if you were in school, you need to put your name on stuff because if I don't have it on Genzabar, I have to make a copy of it and goes into a folder because I am required to show proof that you've done these assignments if it's ever come up. We do something every three years called COE, which is Council on Occupational Education, which means we're held accountable for what I'm assigning you, okay? So it's very important that if you get the courtesy of me allowing you to email assignments because that is a courtesy then I need them labeled and again none of you are emailing assignments but I just want to verbally say that because they'll be watching this later um, also I'm only going to be allowing emailed assignments for a very short time from now um, if you are listening to this and you still do not know how to upload assignments get with me and we're going to have to figure it out because we need those assignments on e-learning Ms. Kelly has put together a wonderful presentation on how to do it, so there shouldn't be any problems. Ms. Barbara Washington, I know that something's going on with the server on your end and it's giving you an error. I'm still working on that with corporate. All right, so that is all of that. So how many of you have gotten an opportunity to actually get into Chapter 23? I've read about it. I'm not really getting into it, though. Okay, well, I have just a very, not funny, but personal. Whenever I started Unitech, I started as an evening instructor. This chapter was the very first chapter I lectured on. <laughs> so I remember where I started. <laughs> so, um, and I can still remember like it was yesterday going in and shaking in my boots. I was so, so nervous with my three students in my night class and, and <laughs> thinking of, okay, are they going to think this is silly? What am I, you know, oh my goodness. But I still use the Khan Academy of video that y'all have today for homework. And you're going to be drawing the eye. That is the, that is the assignment I used for them in class. And so I don't know, it's sentimental to me. Every time I get around, I'm like, yeah, yeah, where I started, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, I like the eye and the auditory system. I find them fairly easy to code. Um, we're gonna be doing some uh, coding today because what it's, I did coding on Tuesday too. I don't know why I'm calling Thursday coding class because we code every class we're, we're at. Um, I do have some videos. Uh, our funny little NURB videos that, who likes those? I like them. I, I, I think they're entertaining. And if you have small children, it's great to set up YouTube and put NURB on for them. My kids used to watch the Magic School Bus all the time. 
So, I mean, to me, it's just those, I, I, I enjoy, I guess because I have small children, or I used to have small children, I enjoy those things. They speak to me more than, you know, the, um, the terminology that's this long and goes over my head. I like the simple and, and basic. So, all right, well, you guys know that I'm gonna have a Google slide every time we get together because that's how we code, right? So let's right. go ahead and get into our Google slides. We're gonna actually start off with a little uh, inspirational quote this morning. And it just says, believe you can and you're halfway there. So that was by Theodore Roosevelt. I really, I saw that this morning, it spoke to me and I thought I would share it with you guys. So coding the eye and ear. And the very first thing is a nerve. Kids Health presents How the Body Works with Chloe and the Nerve. Nerve. Just because eyeballs are the size of ping pong balls doesn't mean they make good ping pong balls. A nerd cannot be blamed for his love of scientific exploration, my dear Chloe. It is what makes him a nerd. Then can we use the eyeballs to explore how an eyeball works instead? We could, but these are kind of small and... Squished. One might say that. How about we take a look at him? Most excellent idea! Let's do! The eyeball is a beautiful machine with lots of different parts working together to let you see. Poets say the eyes are the window to the soul. Well, the window to the eyeball is the cornea, a dome of clear tissue up in front of the eye that focuses light as it passes through. Look at that beautiful green eye, and brown eye, and blue eye. The colorful part is called the iris, right? Yep, it's right behind the cornea. In the middle of the iris is a black circle called the pupil, an opening that lets light into the eye. The iris has muscles attached to it that change its size, making the pupil bigger and smaller to control how much light gets through. So the pupil gets smaller when there's a lot of light and bigger when it's dimmer. Don't look now, but I think we're being watched. Mm. Oh, he blinked first. Which is a good thing. Blinking protects and moistens the eye. Good point. So what happens after the light has passed through the cornea and the pupil? The light passes through the lens. Like the lens in a camera? Precisely. The lens focuses the light onto the back of the eye, where seeing really starts to happen. Can the lens and the eye focus on stuff that's close and stuff that's far like a camera lens would? It sure can. Let's head inside to see how. Last one through the pupil's a rotten egg! The lens is held in place by a bunch of fibers which are attached to the ciliary muscle. Ciliary, ciliary, ciliary. ciliary. The ciliary muscles change the shape of the lens to let the eye change its focus from something close by to something far away. What are you waiting for? Let's get focusing! To see something near, the ciliary muscle makes the lens thicker. To see something far, the ciliary muscle makes the lens thinner. From the lens, we travel to the retina, the back wall of the eyeball. Right, because the lens focuses the light onto the retina. The retina has millions of light-sensitive cells called rods and cones. About 120 million rods and 7 million cones in each eye. Whoa, that's a lot of rods and cones. What's the difference between them? It's the difference between black and white and color. The rods see in black, white, and shades of gray and help us see the shape and form of a thing. Rods also help us see in the dark. And the cones see color? 
Balloons are sensitive to one of three colors, red, green, or blue. Together they let us see millions of colors. But cones need more light than rods to work well. Hey, what's this thing behind the retina? Hey, no bouncing on the optic nerve. It carries messages to the brain about what you're seeing. The rods and cones change the colors and shapes you see into millions of nerve messages. Then those messages are carried along the optic nerve to the brain. It's like your eye is sending the brain a report on what you're seeing. Then your brain translates the report into cat, apple, or bicycle. Or a ping pong ball. Hmm? Keep your eye on the ball there, Nerb. Oh, <laughs> it's on. Kids Health Presents. Sorry, guys. Okay, the next thing that we're going to talk about is modifiers. There are specific modifiers that we use with the eye and ocular and yeah, eye uh, and ocular adnexa uh, specifically. So who can remember what a modifier is? Um, a modifier is um, a additional code at the end of a regular CPT code, not to change the depth, something like not to change the definition of the original code, but add an additional definition to it. That's a wonderful definition. Absolutely right. It's usually two numbers, two letters, or a number and uh, a number and a letter. It's two. Um, and what a modifier does is it gives the third party payer additional information for the CPT code. So um, some of the codes that we're going to be doing or some of the um, scenarios we're going to be doing, we're going to use modifiers, but we're going to talk about that when we get there, okay? So, modifier 50 simply means bilateral procedure. Bilateral means both sides. Unilateral means one side. The modifier LT means left. The modifier RT means right. So let's code. Do you guys have your CPT manuals ready? Yes, ma'am. No, Melanie. Let's see. Sorry. <laughs> I, I don't have mine either. Uh, Kedra, your and Melanie's. I, I, I'm just going to tell you that it's taking a bit. Um, I still I have students that started before you guys that are getting theirs tomorrow. I am keeping on top of it. I just can't make it go faster personally. I, I keep I keep messaging, I emailing, okay. you know, these are who don't, you know, just keep doing what you're doing for now. I apologize. Um, I just wish I had, I could make it rain manual. <laughs> it's so much easier when you get your manual, but anyway. All right. So our very first scenario says a removal of a superficial foreign body in the external left eye. So automatically we have left eye here. So what modifier do you think we're going to need to use? The LT. The LT. LT. That's right. Left LT. So let's go ahead and um, talk about what do we want to look up here? What did we do? We did a removal. Right. So that's where I'm going. I'm not saying I'm right, but that's where I'm going to start. Okay, I don't know if you guys uh, will agree. I went to removal, then I went to foreign body, then I went to eye underneath foreign body, 
And then I see a, se uh, a segment that says external eye. And I got code range 65205 through Oh, I found a, a code that I like. Me too. I did too. <clears throat> Jasmine, your manual should be there tomorrow. If y'all okay. see me keep looking at my calendar behind me, I have all your names written up there. <laughs> and so I'm looking at whose names go together to where their, their manuals are. Okay, Miss Kelly, can you give me the code for this one? 65205-LT. Who agrees? I agree. Miss Sonia? She's frozen. <laughs> I agree. It's 65205 LT. If we read the description of that code beside it, um, it says removal of foreign body, external eye, conjunctival, superficial. So that lines up pretty close to what it says here, right? And then right. the left eye, and that's where our LT goes in. <coughs> so the second uh, scenario is bilateral repair of blepher, blepharopatitis <laughs> tosis <laughs> with frontals, frontalis muscle technique. Sorry, I butchered that. Blepher simply, simply means eyelids, but anyway. So can anybody tell me where they went? What was your choice of a uh, keyword to look up in your index? I went to repair, then I went to the B word. I'm not sure what it is. Okay. And then it gave me code 67902 and the code reads um, front frowns muscle technique with autologous sling and modify 50, which means bilateral. The bilateral procedure. So you went to six, six seven, nine, oh, one, two. Yes, ma'am. Okay, y'all take a look at code 67901 that's what i have 
six seven. Uh, frontal muscle technique with suture of other material. And then 902 says muscle technique with autogenous facial sling. So we have to make a decision between those two. And I chose 67901. And the reason why is because it says nothing about a sling. Right. In our uh, scenario. So I chose 67901. And, um, Dara Lisa, what modifier did you use? Modify 50. Okay. So do you like your code still 67902? Do you or do you agree with 67901? Um 67901. So 67901 with a 50 modifier. When I Googled it with the exact words you gave, it gave 901. It's 67901 with the 50 modifier. So <laughs> even though you're at a disadvantage with not having your CPT manual, <laughs> you can Google the answers. So, um, but yeah, and with that 50 modifier, because it says it's what? Bilateral. Bilateral. Okay. Okay. Oops, sorry. Autoplasty of the right ear with sized reduction. So what did we do here? Look up autoplasty. Okay, so no one blurts the answer out on this one. Let everybody have a chance to uh, see what they can come up with. Watch your spelling. Do you have it, Melanie? Okay, let's hear it. What do you think? Okay, so when I Googled the, ex the exact words and then I double checked it when it gives me certain readings, um, it gave me 69300 zero, zero, and then I did RT for the right ear. Coders, do we agree? Yes. Yeah, I agree. Yes, absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. All right, guys, you are getting, I'm going to have to start coming up with uh, more coding for y'all. Y'all are getting fast. Okay, sclerera, lesion, lesion, excision, left eye. Okay, I'm just going to tell you guys, I went to Scalera. That's what I did. And then I went to Lesion. So, um,
Okay, Miss Kelly, what you got? 6130. And it was, what I don't remember which I it was. I didn't write that down. Left. <laughs> okay. And then LT. LT. Who agrees? Well, she has. 66130. 66130. LT. Yes. I had something different. I'm going to look it up. I'm, I didn't see it. Sonia, can you hear us? Sonia's uh, internet's going in and out, and Kedra's not doesn't have good reception either. So if y'all see me texting, I'm texting them because <laughs> they're having a hard time. I agree. Well, that's what I have. I have six six one three zero with an LT modifier. And this is, I guess, where my disadvantage is because when I Googled it, it came with 65900LT. Okay, so I want to just look at that one. Six, five. Removal of elliptical down growth. Interior chamber of eyes. 659. Removal of. Epithelial downgrowth, anterior chamber of eye. Yeah, I, I don't know, Melanie. That that doesn't make any sense to me. Also. But you have that also. At first, yeah. I had, when I looked it up on Google, because we don't have our, I don't have to. Yeah, well, you know, like you said, that's the disadvantage. You can't get in and double check. Um, but that's what it. Um, that's what yours says. And then the answer, the six, five, six, six, one, three, zero is excision of lesion sclera. So, I mean, like it's exact. So you're right. That's where, you know, you can have some disadvantage there, but, you know, I, I really do appreciate and uh, am very proud of you guys for, you know, taking the initiative to Google it. So, all right, let's go. All right. Removal of impacted curamin from both ears using wax curettes and suction. With this one, I went to removal and then earwax, and it says mm -hmm. auditory canal external. Mm -hmm. And it gives me two codes, and I have a choice between 69209 and 69210. Sonia, can you hear us? What do you think, Melanie? Uh, Google is giving me 69210, and being it's on both ears, I was doing 50 for my modifier. Okay, who agrees? I think 69209. But That's what I had. Six. Okay, let's look. Six nine two zero nine is what you have, Miss Kelly. Yeah. And uh, Daryl Lisa. 
Yes, ma'am. Nine, two, oh, nine, removal and Okay. I see a question though. Okay. Oh, that's instruments. Yes. So, if so you look it at would be 9209. It's irrigation and lavage. Yeah, it'd be the 210. Yep. So 69210 is requiring instruments, and a curette and suction would be considered instruments. Instruments. Right. Okay. Yay, Melanie. <laughs> Even with the Google, it did right that time, huh? Okay, the next one I have, uh, it's just a little question because I had to put three on the page and I didn't have, um, so cataract and lens replacement uses how many different approaches? Do you guys remember when you read your chapter? Mm. The answer is B, two. Cataract and lens replacement uses two different approaches. All right, now I'm fixing to bring up the other one and I just want to remind you, just because there's a lot of words does not mean it's more difficult, okay? Okay. Okay, so our location. I couldn't get it any bigger. Can it? Could, can you, can you guys not see this? I can see it. Okay, I'm going to read it, but I'm going to read you the procedure that was performed was a bilateral time panostomies with placement of ventilation tubes. So it's T-Y-M-P-A-N-O-S-T-O-M-I-E-S -E is what we did. And what's really funny is right where we were, if you look over to the other page, that's where time panostomy was. <laughs> but you would have to read through the codes there. But When you look up time panostomy, you see that there is a 0583T. We're not going to use that one. Then you see one with general anesthesia. I don't see where they're saying they use general. Oh, wait. Yes, they did. After patient was placed under general anesthetic. So general anesthesia. So time panostomy with general anesthesia. That's in the index. Did mm -hmm. you guys see that? Yes, ma'am. And so it gave us what, 69436? Yes, ma'am, that's what I have. Time panostomy require insertion of ventilating tube, general anesthesia. So does that line up pretty much with what our procedure performed was? Yes. Okay, and do we need a modifier? No, I'm not well, 50. Yeah, it says bilateral, so I it think- It says so. bilateral, right. So, so, yeah, it's 93436 with a 50 modifier. Okay, so let's look at our operative report. 
Now, this looks like a, this is a very short report. When you guys begin to pull operative reports um, in your coding uh, careers, um, this is a very short um, one. There's gonna be lots of other things, but the reason that I wanted to really uh, go over this with you is because there's things on here that we don't really need, right? Now, mm -hmm. you would definitely need the diagnosis, but we're not doing diagnoses right now. But if you look at the procedure performed and then you skim through this, the only thing that really was important was what? General anesthetic, right? Um. So as you become um, more experienced in coding, you're not going to need to read every single word that you see in those medical records. That takes a little time. But remember, if what your specialty was, was you were working for ear, nose, and throat doctor, <laughs> you know what you're going to be looking for. And so some of those things are just going to be like white noise. You know what I mean? You're not really, you're going to be able to pull out what you need immediately. Um, I wanted to uh, have another slide that I'm excited to show you guys this next one. Oh, no, not that one. Kids help it's not that one. It's this one. And I know that this is blurry. Uh, you have to purchase these. But this is what I wanted to show you as far as what we call a cheat sheet. So the one on the right that looks like your CPT manual, that is a CPT cheat sheet. Then on the left with the blue and the white, that's an ICD-10 cheat sheet for ophthalmology. How much do they cost? Right. Um, I think one of them was like $21.95 and the other one was like $18.95. But when you go to your facility, they're going to have cheat sheets for you. Now, I have to tell you, when I was coding cardiology, I did not have a cheat sheet at first. I made my own. Just because, uh, you know, the coder that had, was there before me that had been coding uh, my facilities had been there for 25 years. <laughs> She didn't need a cheat sheet. <laughs> yeah, she knew, <laughs> she knew what, what her cheat. codes were. Um, but you can either make your own. Those, one of those was on Amazon. So um, a lot of times your facilities are going to provide those for you. Or they'll pro provide a handwritten one that someone else has made. But mm -hmm. I just thought that was really neat to show you. You may not have to use your CPT as much as you think you're going to. Because when you're in a specialty, you're going to have those cheat sheets is what we call them. And because most of the time, ear, nose and throat specialists, they do the same thing, tubes in the ears over and over. You're gonna know that code in a week, right? right. <laughs> it's because they do that over and over and over again. So, um, you know, it's not as um, hard as you may think. I have students who are coding in the field and they say it's much easier than what they did in class. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I know some of you find this easy, right? Some of it's more difficult than others, but. Yeah, I don't think it's, I don't think it's hard. The thing I don't get about it is like, like putting a wrist together to match the exact code. Yeah, sometimes so that can similar. be a bit tricky. Yeah. But the way that you get better at that is we just keep practicing, right? All right. Okay, next up on our agenda is medical terminology. All right, these are the words I want you to take a look at and I want you to write down the meaning of. If you don't know, it's okay. Write down the term and um, just put a question mark and I am gonna give you the answers. So uh, some of these you were just given on Tuesday and then I've added a few more. Some of you have had them, some of you haven't. And our little fella in our slide, he's concentrating hard on those codes, isn't he? I mean, on those medical terms. I couldn't resist. I thought he, he was funny. He made me <laughs> smile. <laughs> Oscopy, ostomy, or stomy. Otomy or Tommy, ectomy, itis, oplasty, and al um, alga. Think of fibromyalgia. Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna just wait just one more minute. And these are our answers. Oscopy means viewing of. Ostomy or stomy is surgically creating a hole. Otomy or tommy, surgical incision. Ectomy, surgical removal. Itis is inflammation. You guys are going to see that so much in diagnosis coding. Itis is inflammation. Oplasty is surgical repair. And algae is pain. You got them? Yes, ma'am. Okay, guess what? Next week when we get on and do Zoom, I'm probably going to pop them up there again. I'm popping them up there and we're going over and over and over them. And when you're reading your medical little scenarios, are you recognizing when you see an ectomy? Yeah. Or an ostomy? That, that's why I do this is because that recognition is going to make you feel so much more comfortable in what you're reading. It's not going to be like reading Greek, right? And, and, and I want you to be comfortable with what you're doing.